just really satisfying when you find a use for something that you were putting aside but you didn't really know what it was ever going to be used for. But for the last few months, every day I make a drink of sea buckthorn. Just that's hot enough. That's just pure juice. Actually, it's not true because I added some water and I blended it up and I have this residue. So what I've been doing, like every day, because I yeah, have this kind of every day or every other day, I've been putting this in the drying room for a couple of days, thinking, well, you know, I'll incorporate this into something one day. Um, didn't ever know what that was. I thought, well, probably I'll end up just feeding it to the birds. But the day has come where I'm going to use it in a recipe. So here it is. And there's a lot of seed in there and just residual dry kind of pulp. But yeah, lots of seeds. And I just did a test to see if it all grinds up nicely. It does. And I'm going to use this and this and this. And uh, I get all the ingredients ready. Just blend this up further and I'll show you what I'm going to make and why. There's a very important reason why. So I'll tell you what the watts are in a minute. What was looking a bit like soap and what was in the jars. But the why is that from the 21st of March until the 21st of June, as long as I start on time, I'm going to be eating wild food just for three months as part of a project called the Wild Wild Biome Project. So we're going to collect some really interesting kind of data. There's 26 of us, some of those eating just wild food for a month, but about half of us eating wild food, just wild food for three months. And yeah, we're really interested on the impact on our gut flora and the knock-on effects that has for our health. And I'll tell you a bit more about that project in a minute and how, if you want to, apart from just following me on here, you can support it further. But I just realised, had another great ingredient. Well, all these ingredients are great, but so this is half of the pulp, dried sea buckthorn seed and residual pulp mixed with half acorn flour. And these acorns were, I'm sorry, I don't mean acorns, I mean chestnuts, sweet chestnuts. They're kind of interesting because they've been stored away for about eight years now. <laughs> I kind of forgot they were there. And uh, yeah, it's literally a case of blowing off the dust, shelling them and grinding them. So got that. And then I was going to just add a jar of this very, very special syrup, which is, and it, this wasn't by design, but it just turned out to be this way. It's a 66.666 a 66 to 1 reduction of sycamore sap. Let's make a syrup. This is going to be my, my sweet treat for the whole project. Um, by the way, they're crackers. Spoiler, they're crackers. And I thought, I wasn't going to, but I thought I'm going to add some birch sap. This is an 80 to 1 reduction. And what looked like soap was actually rendered down fat from deer, venison fat, from one that was sadly killed on the road. So put that in there too. I might need some water, we'll see, I'm not sure. Put a little bit of sea salt that I got from Ireland of Portland. So the point is, all the ingredients are 100% foraged, 100% wild. Anyway, I'm going to mix this up. 
form them into crackers, get them in the oven, and then tell you more about this project. Oh, by the way, one thing I should say is, for those of you that follow me here, or initially started following me here because you're interested in foraging and wild food, you're, you might be relieved that there's going to be lots of recipes and uh, information about this project over the next few months. And I say that because many of you might be thinking, what happened to Fergus? All he ever does now is post about fish skin. No, and that's making leather from fish skin. I can't promise there won't be posts about fish skin leather because there certainly will. But there will be more foraging posts, more wild food posts. That noise means that oven's up to temperature. They're ready to go. Well, I kind of ran out of trays. Still got some more. So I'm going to put those in and all I like to do, things like this where there's no kind of gluten, is like I like to roll them out on a kind of non-stick sheets, bake them uh, for about 15 minutes and then dehydrate them for a few hours because I find that way you get them really nice and crisp and there's no risk of burning them. And when the ingredients are this precious, believe me, you don't want to burn them. <laughs> so put these in the oven and then I'll just give you the full details of this uh, yeah, really interesting project. Well, there they are. And I'm really pleased with them, to be honest. And <clears throat> I don't know why I was calling them crackers, because they're really biscuits. Um, I know why I was calling them crackers, actually. Um, the answer is over there, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, so I made the, the, the other clips uh, for this video about a week ago. Often I do this, and actually a lot of the videos I make never see the light of day because I can never find the clips or really just 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 don't want to get around to putting it all together because it's yeah it's a bit of a hassle sometimes but anyway I persist so here they are but it's a week later and I've started the project now and actually it's the second day and Got some wild garlic, so just cooking that up. This is a dinner now. And pick some oyster mushrooms and some jelly mushrooms in the woods today. And the crackers, this is why I had crackers on my mind, were these ones which were made out of 150 different wild greens, so kind of powder, and some acorn flour and some deer fat. So I'm going to have one of those with these and some venison stew. It's completely plain apart from some natural sea salt. And I pressure canned that so it's going to be kind of quite important. But the main thing is yeah let's let Monica who's really spearheading this project tell you more about it and how possibly you could help. So here she is. Hello, I'm Mo Wild and I've been teaching foraging for several decades now. In 2021, I managed to live entirely off wild food for a year, which I recorded in my book, The Wilderness Cure. And during this time, I sent stool samples off to a lab to find out how this impacted my microbiome. The results were interesting. There was a lot of movement in bacteria. For example, going from winter to spring when I suddenly started eating lots of wild greens again, sorrel, young dock, purslane, my oxalobacter, the bacteria that breaks down oxalates in our guts, increased over a thousand percent. But a proper scientific study needs lots of people to be scientifically sound. And so far, in regard to wild food, only indigenous peoples like the African Hadza and South American Aceh have had their gut microbiomes analysed. So what happens to people on a standard Western diet when they switch to our local wild foods? Aren't you as curious as I am to find out? Perhaps it really makes a difference to our health to incorporate something wild into our daily diet, but currently we just don't know. I know it improved my health and my waistline no end when I did it, 
and beneficial bacteria started colonizing my gut that had never been there before. The exciting news is that this spring, 26 foragers have agreed to join me to eat only wild food to find out. 12 have agreed to eat wild food for a period of three months and 22 are eating wild food for one month. The Zoe project, headed by Professor Tim Spector, is providing the gut microbiome tests to see how our microbiomes compare to the average Briton. In addition, they're measuring blood fat and sugar before and after, so we can see some of the health benefits that may or may not be gained. However, we'd also like to take this unique opportunity to find out as much as we can. How do hormones behave? And how does this diet affect blood cells, liver, vitamins and minerals? Clinical trials and lab tests are notoriously expensive, but I feel that this citizen science is really important. This study will make a huge contribution to what we know about the indigenous Western human gut microbiome and how significant the loss of wild foods might be from our diet. I'm running this project for free and none of the participants are being paid. It's taken a lot of my time organising it and will take even more to get to the point where we can submit a paper for peer review and publishing in a scientific journal. But I don't mind giving this the passion it deserves. However, to do extra tests, to make this project really significant, I need your help to fund comprehensive blood tests for each member of the project. With these blood tests, we can truly see what happens before and after wild foods are introduced into the average diet. Please make a donation to the project today by clicking on the button below. Whether your donation is just the price of a coffee or you can make a big corporate gesture, every bit helps. Thank you for donating and making this fascinating study a reality.